just start to report it. It's closed, they just want to talk to me. Dear colleagues, my name is Katerina Zanareva. I'm a member of Team of Russia, and now I'm going to present our solution on problem number nine, uh, the soy sauce object. As for condition, we must uh, uh, we use a laser beam passing through the uh, thin layer of soy sauce, and we can absorb the thermal lens. And uh, we were asked to investigate this phenomenon. Let us start with ex ex experimental setup. Uh, in order to, con uh, to control the thickness of soy sauce, we use the following. Uh, we took two glasses and uh, think, uh, and put the zinc uh, plate with unknown thickness, and then um, we put soy sauce inside and clamping these glasses. So now we can control the thickness of soy sauce. And in order to control the um, image, well, uh, the image uh, we did following. Uh, we use the uh, laser, we control uh, by unputting voltage, so the power was a constant, and uh, the distance between soy sauce and the picture was uh, 4 meters. That's cousin. 4 meters. Uh, so, um, we use only soy sauce horizontal, uh, because uh, in first our observations, uh, we use uh, vertically, and we saw uh, some convection process. So our uh, so our pictures was uh, next, uh, was elongated. So uh, therefore, we use only uh, horizontal soy sauce lens. And uh, as a first observation, uh, we can see that over the time the picture increases, then the picture decreases, and also we can observe the rings as demonstrated on the slide. Uh, now let's talk about qualitative explanation, uh, how is there, uh, why we can observe the diffusing lens. Uh, the slide demonstrated soy sauce and the two glasses, uh, this is the beam. And uh, uh, our qualitative explanation is based on the fact that the laser beam hits the surface. So, uh, in this point we have the maximum temperature and the temperature decreases with a distance. Next slide. Next slide. And uh, uh, due to thermal expansion, uh, in the red points we have the maximum temperature, therefore we have the minimum density. And uh, the density decreases with the, uh, increases with the distance. Uh, as we know the fact that the reflective index is proportional to the density, we can say that in the center we have the minimum uh, reflective index. And the rays deflected the side with the uh, bigger reflective index. So, uh, they have the dispersive lens. Next slide. And uh, we saw that uh, during the time picture increases and then decreases. And why we can observe it? Uh, uh, after some time also resolves heating and uh, there are no temperature diffusion, therefore no change of the reflective index, uh, therefore we can observe that our lens uh, didn't work. Uh, the time uh, that our lens can be worked was uh, one minute. The next slide. And uh, why we can observe the rings? Uh, because the screen and uh, put some points on the screen. And uh, if we summarize all illumination of the all rings, we can observe the phase shift. Uh, the question of, of the uh, phase, uh, the question of the phase demonstrated on the slide. Uh, we can observe that the different point we have different reflective index and different distance. Therefore, we can observe the phase shift. And uh, yes. Uh, now let's uh, talk about uh, uh, mathematical model and talk about how the temperature in the soy sauce are changing with the distance. Uh, we write down the equation for uh, changing their uh, changing their uh, uh, heat, heat, heat changes and then write down how the intensity of the soy sauce changes during the time. Um, the next slide. 
And uh, uh, to, uh, so, uh, to solve this equation, we must know the sum coefficient for the soy sauce. Uh, to find the absorption coefficient, uh, we uh, do the following. Uh, we use the Pascal light sensor and pour the different uh, uh, thickness of soy sauce. This depends on demonstration on the slide. Next. Uh, and we can observe this coefficient for soy sauce that uh, isn't a tabular value. Next slide. And uh, we must know how the uh, reflexive index changes with the temperature. And uh, to do it, we use the reflectometer. It is a device for measuring the reflective index of light. We got this dependence only experimentally, and we can find uh, this coefficient. So now we can uh, 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 solve our uh, equation and uh, obtain how the temperature changes during the distance. And uh, for better demonstration, we use uh, we plot this dependence on the program and it is the most uh, important uh, part of our work how the temperature in the soil cells uh, changes with the distance. Yes. And now let's talk how the intensity of the soil cells uh, changes uh, on the uh, distance. Uh, we know that the intensity is proportional to the amplitude. Uh, it's next. Mm -hmm. Uh, then we write down uh, the phase uh, if we know that in the focus uh, all, uh, all rays are in one uh, phase. Therefore, uh, the phase shift doesn't depend on the uh, radius. Okay, and now we got this equation. We plot this experimental uh, theoretically and plot this dependence. And then uh, uh, we plot uh, this dependence uh, experimentally. This dependence uh, using the light sensor uh, that demonstrates from the slide. We can uh, observe some differences in our theory and our experimental. Uh, these differences can be explained following. Uh, the uh, fir first reason that our laser beam isn't round. Second, uh, we have uh, distance to the screen and uh, lens. In our mathematical model, we uh, calculate that it is intensified. And uh, uh, our sensor uh, has a size for smoothing the height. And uh, uh, as we got a lens, let's calculate what is the focal length. Uh, we write down how the reflective index changes with the, uh, with the temperature. Obtain this value uh, temperature we got after our temperature distribution. Uh, then we write down the length. Uh, the phase, the phase shift, and uh, obtained uh, the next formula for a uh, theoretical calculation of the focus length of the our soy source. This formula, and uh, uh, this is theoretical. How we can calculate it uh, by uh, experimental? Next slide. Uh, we can do following. Next slide. Uh, we put our laser beam and measure the radius of the uh, measure of the radius of this beam. Then we put the soy sauce and see how this uh, image uh, changes. We uh, from the geometry we obtained uh, this uh, uh, relationship between this value and uh, we can find uh, the focus length experimentally. And uh, as for comparing our theory and practice was for. Uh, Ex experiment report that uh, it equals uh, 20 centimeters, and uh, as for uh, as for theoretical, we uh, we obtain the same value. Uh, let's talk about parametrical studies. Uh, we change, we increase the current, and uh, see how the our uh, image on the screen changes with this. Uh, this experiment presents on the slide, and we are uh, the next. Uh, we obtained it uh, on the graph. And uh, how we can explain this difference? Uh, change next. Uh, we change the laser current, therefore we change the intensity in the source source. Uh, therefore we change the temperature and the reflective index. If we change the reflective index, our rays uh, have a bigger size. Therefore we have uh, the, the next dependence. Uh, now we uh, uh, calculate how
power, optical power of the cities affects of the uh, radius on the screen. We obtained this dependence and how we got it. Uh, we took two glasses and played a uh, different number uh, and put the different number of plate and so we can control the height. Next slide. And uh, uh, using the reflectometer, uh, we obtained how the density of the soy sauce uh, changes with a temperature, obtained this uh, dependence. Uh, and uh, uh, what was done in our, uh, our work? Uh, our experimental setup was constructed, uh, was constructed in the, the current, uh, we can control the current. Uh, the next, uh, we use only horizontal lens, therefore no um, convection process. Our quality of explanation basis on the fact that uh, a laser beam hits the surface and uh, uh, changes the density and changes the reflective index. Therefore, we have the dispersive lens. Uh, uh, we uh, discussed about ring formation. Uh, therefore, uh, we have a different phase shift in one point on the screen. And uh, obtained how the temp uh, temperature distribution on the, and the absor absorption coefficient. Uh, we got the theoretical formula for focal length and got the method for each uh, measure for experimental. Uh, we find in a uh, coefficient showing how the temperature uh, changes with how the reflective field changes with the temperature and uh, but comparing how the intensity uh, changes uh, with the distance uh, with theory and practice uh, the dependence, uh, we got the dependence image uh, means uh, from the laser current and uh, uh, what the change in density with the temperature and so thank you for your attention so you claim, uh, sorry, so you claim that the density of the fluid decreases as you heat it. If that's the case, where does the fluid go? If the density of the fluid decreases as you heat it, where does that fluid go? If uh, if the density in the center changes, yeah, where does that fluid go? Uh, come out. Is it not sealed? Not sealed. So is your is is the soy sauce sealed within the two glass slides? Is, is the soy sauce sealed within the two glass slides that you sandwiched it into? Okay, I'll go on. We can discuss it later. So, do you assume that your beam is parallel as it passes through the lens? Uh, what is there? Do you assume the beam is parallel? Like, are the rays parallel? Uh, 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 yes, yes. Parallel. Do you assume the rays are parallel? Uh, did you verify this? Yes. How? Uh, it was. Our, we didn't measure it. Okay, so you did not verify this. Yeah. Alright, so did you consider the fact that, did you consider any effects of the absorptivity on the focal length? Like you, you calculated how the laser, some of the laser intensity light power is absorbed, so did you investigate those effects on the focal length? Yes, yes sir. Okay. Um, Oh, so, so in your focal length equation, do you, uh, did you measure the beam radius, sir? Uh, yes, ah. it equals uh, 1. Uh, using the, uh, in the screen, we measure the beam, The initial beam radius yes. of the laser? Yes. How, how, how large is that? Uh, we use, uh, uh, can you open this slide? This yes. the, not the spot, the laser itself. Like the, the radius of the laser itself. Uh, we have uh, lens diffusion and uh, we... Is the, is the lens equation valid? I'm sorry, there's no more time for an additional question and please move on to preparation of the position.
Please start your position. So, hi, I'm Raymond from Team Canada, and I'll be doing the opposition for question 9, soy sauce optics. So let's quickly go to the problem statement again. So using a laser beam pass for a thin layer around 200 microns of soy sauce, the thermal lens effect can be observed to investigate this phenomenon. So let's go through some of the tasks that we believe the port should go So first off, uh, we must construct a very well-controlled experimental setup to very relevant parameters, as we are using lasers to control, and this verification of your experimental setup is very important. Second, we need to validate uh, certain We have to look at into the Gaussian beam to actually analyze how the spot is going to form on the wall. Third, we have to derive a theoretical prediction for the focal length and the spot size. And fourth, we have to experimentally verify so the, our theoretical prediction using our control based learning. Alright, so let's quickly go over a summary of the report. So they had their experimental setup to control their soy sauce layer thickness, which we thought was appropriate using a spacer within two microscopes or glass slides. And then they had their quantum clock. Quantitative theory and a qualitative explanation of the phenomenon, which I'll discuss more about later. And lastly, they had some experimental verification of their parameters. Okay, so let's go over some of the merits. So they had their qualitative explanation of the, the theory, even though it was flawed. They then talked about the density of the fluid. However, that is not entirely relevant due to the fact that the main reason why we see a variation in the density is just because of the thermal optic coefficient, uh, which is DMPT, which and that and it's uh, and then you can derive an equation for the focal length as a function of both that and the absorptivity coefficient, which the reporter failed. Uh, second, they had their quantitative theory derivation uh, with their lens equation, which again, uh, as I'll talk about later, is not entirely correct. But let's go over some of the next steps the, the reporter can take. So first off, we believe there's a very limited theoretical model. For example, various assumptions were just simply not valid. Uh, such as the parallel beam, as laser we know is a Gaussian beam, there's only in the Rayleigh range, which is a small range, that's the only range where you might be able to assume that it's parallel. In addition, looking at the density change, that, like I, as I said previously, that is not the main reason for this phenomenon. And also, uh, we noticed in, some, in one of their equations, they did a first order approximation of e to the negative uh, x squared, or something similar to that, and that's going to introduce some errors in their theoretical predictions. Uh, lastly, um, and finally, in terms of their experimental scope, we realize we, there's no characterization of their laser beam. They do not measure the beam radius, which uh, I'm not sure how they were going to calculate the focal length even with the Thinet's equation from that, because you have to know the size of your initial object to be able to do that. Uh, and in this case, that, again, is not valid. And we just think there's, some, there's not enough experimental control when you're using various optical components, such as lasers, because that is very important. So let's go over a quick overview of what we're going to be talking about in our discussion. So first off, I'd like to clarify the main origin of the thermal lens effect. So uh, looking at absorptivity and why the, the index is changing. Uh, second, we're going to go over some of the characteristics of the laser profile, as that was not very clear in the reporter's presentation. Uh, third, we're going to go over some of the clarification as, of the theoretical assumptions that I talked about uh, previously. And fourth, we'll go over some of the experimental improvements that I think the uh, reporter could take to get some more better results. All right, uh, so I'd like to invite up the reporter to begin the discussion. Thank you. 
assume, so the, uh, we assume it's not going to be, so you have 1 plus uh, gn dt minus delta t, right? What, what did it say? gn dt is a thermal optic coefficient, which is a constant for a certain material, and this should be uh, measured or taken from literature, depending on. Uh, it appears that, that uh, I saw that this uh, change of the temperature differences uh, change of the density. But here, as you can see in this equation, which is a known equation, there's no dependence on the actual, de like, physical density. It's only a dependence on this constant and the change in the temperature, which we model with this temperature. With this temperature. Do you agree with this? Uh, I agree with this, but uh, why do you think that the density isn't... Uh, the density, so what happens is, is, since you're sealing, so you're assuming that the volume is going to change. Yes. And the volume is... Well, Yes, yeah, however, as you said in your experimental setup, you, you sealed, you have essentially sealed your soy sauce within a very small container, right? You essentially sealed it. Um, and the soy sauce will be inside. As such, inside. within this sample, right? It's sealed, it, there's, like, there's like a barrier here, right? You use all the thermal lens, uh, for example. Yeah, that's, that doesn't make a big difference. Okay. So, as, it's going to be sealed. So, it's going to be sealed inside here. So, I don't think the bottom is going to be changing. And our experiment won't change. Why? Because we because said you sealed it. Because the experiment is changing the temperature. Right, but the, the volume is not going to change very significantly. And, and the, again, the, mo the most important, that is completely negligible if you compare it to actually this here. So, if you want to, like, I, so, like, you're saying essentially it's going to happen. You're gonna, it's gonna, the, the soy sauce is going to turn to this sort of a shape to create a diverging plant. However, so even with the volume argument, there's a flaw in that because if you assume that the volume is increasing, you'd actually produce a lens of this shape, which is going, you, know, you produce a lens of this shape, which is clearly a convex lens. So you'd actually get a focusing. Piece. So that's another flaw in your theory, right? In our theory, uh, you know the, the, uh, I, uh, I want to say that uh, the reflective thing depends on the temperature. Yes, it's right. But and not on the density. Not on the density, density changing density or the volume. In our experiment, changes the density, changes the volume. expect to 
see any divergence in that scenario. As in, you would not see this sort of divergence of that. that you our assumptions there. But you cannot make that assumption because in that scenario, what happens is that they will essentially they'll just pass straight through. Exactly. What you actually have to assume to solve this problem is you actually have to, you have to characterize the Gaussian beam and find, like essentially, you have to find that like you're going, most likely, you're, you're, you're not going, you're most likely not going to be in the range. So this is known as the Rayleigh range, and that's the range where you can make the valid assumption of, of parallel. However, it's, unless you determine what that range is and that you're conducting your experiment in that range, you cannot make the assumption that you're parallel. And, in that, and also, this phenomenon, will not, as I explained, will not actually occur in that range. What we actually have to do is you have to, you have to find, your, essentially your phenomenon is going to be occurring somewhere after that range, range and that's when you're going to see that phenomenon occur. Right. Um, does, that, does that make sense? How, how, how we can report that uh, our laser beam will be parallel? Right, so your laser beam is not parallel. Lasers are not, like, they're much better than your normal, your standard, like, flashlight or something. However, we compare, however, a laser, you, in this experiment, you must still make verify that this is not parallel, and that's an invalid assumption. Do you agree now? Would you agree with that? I agree with that uh, the uh, direction of the lighting depends uh, on the temperature distribution. Okay, right, so we can actually, so what we can do, so do you think we can have, we can, do you have a way of solving for this, just how these, like how we go diverge? Can you solve this? Do you have a method? Since as, I, I think we've proven that the beam is not in fact parallel, do you have a, can you think of a way to determine, to characterize this laser beam, to, to gain this kind of a function? So this is like, so this is this is going to be like some z-axis, so the direction of propagation, and this is going to be your, like, this is going to be like the radius of, so this is the radius of your... So you want to define No, it's like, like how would you construct, can you construct an experiment to determine, to characterize this beam? So you can write, so for a Gaussian beam, you can write it as i is equal to i naught as a function of e to the negative r squared over the so right. this is the, yes, yeah, so you can characterize that as this, right? the intensity of the source of the change Right, right, so, so this is, so you can, you can do this, right? So, but can you, can you, can you think of like an experimental setup where you can actually solve and characterize your laser? Because that's an extremely important part of this problem that I think Anyway, uh, so moving on, um, can you can you clarify some? Uh, can you, so actually, returning back to the thermal lens. So, uh, so what other? So how do you think? So actually, when you do this experiment, what happens is is you must actually add a convergent lens before. So let's assume that this is your soy sauce sample, and you actually must add a convergent lens. Normally, you must add a convergent lens before this to ampl essentially amplify the effect. So, can you, do you, would you agree with this? Okay. So, in that case, how would you actually... Sorry, sorry, can you do that again? May well, I ask you to please summarize the discussion? So, I think, in, as a whole, we were able to determine some of the flaws of the uh, reported theory. For example, the fact that they assume that the density change was responsible for this phenomenon, I believe, is inherently flawed. And we, we discussed how we might be able to model this using the temperature distribution and this equation of n is equal to n naught times 1 plus t n over t t times delta t. And from that, we might be able to derive some representation of the focal length. In addition, another, as I stated previously, another important task of this problem was describing the Gaussian beam. And what I believe that, uh, as we discussed, we perhaps we can employ several methods, such as using a razor beam or if we can get a laser profile to characterize the Gaussian beam. And using the Gaussian beam, we're actually able, and several other equations, we'll be able to predict the spot size on the wall, which I believe the reporter was not able to do in the presentation. Just as Okay, thank you. Three minutes time for the opportunity to pose questions to the opponent as well as the reporter. Okay, so hello, man. So before I go to review this stuff, so the first, uh, the question for both, uh, wait, sorry, I'm sorry. Um, what did you measure the time the velocity of your first loss, or is the thermal like effect? The question I The time the, the, the time you go, because I can imagine that you place right you just place the the lens of the sample right in the, in front of the laser, it wouldn't create the thermal effect like this. So if you measure it somehow was what's the was the time dependence of the formation of the thermal effect? Uh, in our experiments, we went the thermal lens walk uh, about one minute. 
they they try to uh, qualitatively explain how the <laughs> how the effect is uh, how the how the temperature is changing over over the time over the dimensions of the width of the soy sauce and the, the of the uh, <laughs> the soy sauce. Okay, and then the uh, here was based on the heat equations and the refraction. Uh, then to the experiments, they tried to investigate the intensity profile and the focal uh, So to the reports generally, the experiments are set up, we find quite uh, good, but they didn't uh, they didn't uh, uh, ensure that the, how how to do the propagation of the of their laser. Uh, they based their theory on uh, heat equations as I stated. Then uh, they, they, didn't, they had co correlation between an intensity profile, but on the graph we didn't see any uh, units or anything that was uh, really saying anything. Uh, then we didn't get a quite clear explanation of the refractive index gradient. And uh, next big mistake for the uh, was, was that they uh, didn't uh, account for the heat flux in glass. Uh, next to the opponent, they uh, they try to uh, attempt they attempted to explain this phenomenon more more, cl more clearly. They picked up the point that the beam the beam uh, parallel assumption isn't right. Uh, then they said that uh, uh, they asked about the experimental setup and but what we, we missed was the uh, lack of the time dependence uh, involve, involvement of the uh, of the thermal effect because it, this is the real. Uh, the real thing that what the, ask, uh, what the task asks us to do is to investigate the thermal lens, thermal lens effect. And uh, to the discussion summary, they were talking about the thermal lens uh, effect and uh, the density change as the reporter was talking about the proportionality, uh, inverse proportionality to temperature. Then they also talked about the importance of the Gaussian beam, Gaussian beam propagation. Uh, which I wish we agree, uh, which we agree with the opponent. Uh, they did talk about also the theoretical assumptions and uh, the experimental improvement. So the clashes were uh, the importance of that uh, density, as the reporter stated, and the opponent says uh, it's dependent on the co co thermal co coefficient. And we agree with the uh, we agree with the opponent that this is the gradient of temperature which is important. Uh, another clash was that the laser was parallel, and as the opponent said, that it's, it can be uh, it can be parallel, and we also agree with this that the Gaussian interval is important in this effect. Uh, also, they they uh, they had a clash with the spread of the laser, which we agree with the opponent that the uh, um, that the uh, specific curvature of the of the propagating uh, uh, propagating. Uh, uh, beams is is evolving such a hyperbolic, such hyperbolic functions as we draw the pictures. But then uh, I didn't I didn't like about the opponents that he presented more of his own uh, of his own own uh, uh, experiments uh, and talk about not not talking about there. Okay, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, two minutes time for attention. Two minutes time for concluding remarks by the board. The opening to discuss about uh, plots of explanations. Uh, I saw that the main uh, reason uh, of the sort of thermal source source lens is the uh, uh, change in the temperature of this distance and uh, the density changes too because the air uh, shows this dependence. And uh, uh, in our experiment, uh, uh, we have some uh, parts of source of go out. Therefore, proves that uh, the density changes, and uh, uh, this coefficient uh, changes the density, uh, changes the density during the temperature. This graph uh, shows how the density changes with the temperature. And uh, uh, in our experiments, we uh, use that uh, the uh, laser beam was parallel, as, uh, because uh, the distance between the laser and uh, the lens was uh, 10 cm. And uh, it is right. It's our assumptions. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you. Okay, so sometimes you take questions. Yes, I'll make them. Could you show us the slide with the temperature profile? Mm -hmm.
special profile when you're using the theoretical model. Theoretical uh, temperature profile, R squared minus R squared. So, so you, you solve with some uh, problem, of course. Yes, uh, uh, the coefficient, the thermal uh, coefficient, I mean, kappa. Where did you get this? Is it fitting uh, for a parameter or you get this? Uh, we use uh, this parameter, we calculate this parameter as for water. For water? For water. Uh, and what about uh, so you input it, uh, you put it into your. Uh, yes, yes. And you get this, uh, uh, you, you consider this comparison with your uh, experimental data? We can't, we can't measure it, therefore we use uh, like water. So you didn't, you didn't fit, you didn't use these parameters with that. Any more questions? If not, I would like to pose a question to the recorder. The task specifically specifies uh, 200 micrometers as a sufficient spacing. May I ask you how is spacing controlled in your experiments? How we control? Yeah, how is it controlled? How we control? Yeah, like you mentioned, sorry, you mentioned this. We have spacing plates. Yes. How, how, do, how do you make them? Uh, how we. Uh, we know the thickness of the plate and the rear or data photo. Can you tell me what kind of plates are those? I, I still don't get it, sorry. Uh, it's like a we have a thin plate and the clamp is the glass. Therefore, uh, we have uh, one thickness. We clamp it. Yeah, what, what's, what's in between? Sorry for it. What's, what's? what's in between the glasses? What's the material? Material uh, oh. It's like a uh, thick uh, aluminum. Aluminum. Okay. Aluminum. Okay. okay. Additional question? Okay. Um, if not, I have a question um, for the opponent. You mentioned that <coughs> conducting the experiment, the optimal. The overall observation might might differ from the case uh, where actually the soy sauce is sealed and not sealed. Right. Could, so, could you elaborate on that a little bit? So what, what was, would actually change trying, your mind? I, I was trying to clarify. What, I, I, so I assumed that it was sealed, but this aluminum is not going to be perfectly sealed. So it, it might. I want, so in my scenario, what I want to do is a density of it for my scenario was not an important factor since we just since I used a Teflon spacer in between two microscope slides. And then that's so then I would assume it's sealed and then I guess there's minimal expand there's more there's and then I filled it up and then I filled up the space between the, and then I like with a dropper and then I clamped them together to okay, and okay. Yes, then to the opponent. Uh, you stated that uh, you write down this formula for the change on the refractive indices. Of course it, it depends on the density both, on the density and the temperature, because of the thermodynamic state. So what what is uh, the derivative under the constant constant density oh, or uh, it's partial derivative or it's so this is so this is just a constant for I mean it's a, it's a partial derivative under the constant density or what what kind of derivative because uh, the refraction uh, the so you would assume you would assume that it's constant density yes constant density so yes. you you take into account of the thermal dependence of the refractive indices or this experiment yeah that, that. so the third, yeah so this GIT is the main factor. To the, to the reviewer, do you agree with this? Uh, I think it's a partial differentiation of the. Uh, so, the main cause of the effect because of the thermal uh, dependence of the refractive index. Yes, and I think. Not, not the density. Uh, I think it's the. Do you agree with that? The, yes. The main reason is the change in temperature. Okay. Question to the reviewing team. You mentioned that the reporter was controlling convection. Can you explain why the background of that statement was? Uh, I think it was with the placement of the soy sauce and it was with the, with the, uh, the cheese bits, the, uh, the sample was placed horizontally. Yes. And therefore you do not fall. The convection, uh, is, the convection is an issue. With his, with her experiment set up, yes. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. hands up. Mm -hmm. And there's no more time for any questions. And we move on to break. Thank you.